Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. It's time to do another video and today we're talking about something that is near and dear to my heart, should be to yours as well. We're going to try to save you some money. Specifically, if you're using AI Center in UiPath and have skills deployed inside of AI Center that you're not using all the time, that could be costing you a lot of money. But let's just jump right in. Okay, so if you're using AI Center and it has a lot of capabilities, for example, when you're doing document understanding, you will most likely have some skills deployed inside of AI Center. And the way AI Center works is that you purchase what are called AI units. It's sort of the currency inside of AI Center. And then every time you use AI Center for something, um, those AI units are spent. And then when you don't have any more of them, you have to buy more. And that's how you path make money. And that's how you get stuff done. So that's fair enough. But in AI Center, when you have a skill deployed and you're not using it, if it is deployed, it is still consuming AI units simply because it's deployed, it's available. And if you have a skill that's maybe being used once a week or once a month, it shouldn't be deployed all the time. So what I've done is I've built an automation and that automation then makes API calls into AI Center, starting and stopping skills uh, based on some parameters. And um, this automation can be downloaded. I'll provide a link in the description below so you can download it and, and expand on it or whatever you want to do, I don't care. Um, but I'll show you how it works roughly here and then you can download it and, and work with it and hopefully save a ton of money. And if you're from UiPath, well, I'm sorry I had to do this, but um, scheduling of deployment and undeployment of uh, skills is not supported in AI Center yet. I hope it will be. Are you working on this? Let me know in, in the comments below if you're from UiPath. Um, in AI Center, there is a setting that you can undeploy a skill automatically after a certain number of days where it hasn't been used. So that's fair enough, but you want to be able to activate the skill again automatically. And we can do that by using this little automation. So let's jump into Studio and see what I've built. Okay, so we're inside Studio and this is what I've built. It's very simple. There's no error handling or anything. You can add that yourself when you download the project. But what it does is basically it authenticates against the uh, authentication service from UiPath so that you get a token that you can use when making subsequent API calls. Then using the skill name, and we'll use that as an argument, we can find what's called the skill ID. And I'll go through all of these arguments in just a second. We can find the skill ID and then based on another argument, we can then either go left here to start the skill or go right to stop the skill. And then it does a couple of log messages that are just kind of for information. And then down here, it makes a couple of API calls, either starting or stopping the skill. So it's really pretty simple. What we have if we look in the arguments pane down here, we have a number of arguments, organization name, tenant name, skill name, and skill action. Well, the organization name is your organization's name in the uh, automation cloud. The tenant name is the name of the tenant. Not a big surprise there, really. Um, then the skill name is the name of the skill inside of AI Center that you want to deactivate or activate. And the skill action is either start or stop. Then we have a number of IDs here. Tenant ID, account ID, app ID, and then an app secret. I'll show you how all of this stuff works. It's really simple to set up if you just follow the video. So, so make sure you do that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to jump into Automation Cloud and find some of all of these values that we need to paste in when running the automation. So let's go ahead and do that now. So if we start with the organization name and tenant name, in my case, what we do is we just go into our orchestrator here. And then we will have in the URL, we'll have the uh, organization name as the first value after the cloud uipath.com and then the tenant name as the next value between the next two slashes here. So our organization name is October demo and our tenant name is default tenant. Let's paste this into uh, notepad. The organization was October demo and the tenant name was default tenant. So let's jump back into studio and see what else we need. We also need the skill name and the skill action. Well. the skill name, we we'll need to go into AI Center to find that. So we we'll jump back into the browser, jump into AI Center. I have a number of projects in here. They're all just kind of dummy projects. The one I'm looking for is the one inside 
this actual project called dummy project. And we'll go into that, go to ML skills, and we can see that we have this translator skill. That's the name of the skill. So translator skill, I can go in here and copy it from up here. And we will paste it into Notepad. The next one was the skill action. And this can be either stop or start, depending on whether we want to stop or start the skill. The next thing we'll need is, uh, if we go into Studio, is we need a tenant ID, an account ID, an app ID, and an app secret. The tenant ID and account ID is very easy to find. Basically, you go in here, you go up here to the top uh, menu. There are these three dots. You can view profile. And then you'll have the account ID up here at the top and the tenant ID right below. So we'll just copy the account ID, go into Notepad, paste that in. And then the next one was the tenant ID. We'll also copy that. There we go. And then we'll jump into Studio and see what else we need. We need an app ID and an app secret. Let's just make room for those here. So what you need to do inside of Automation Cloud is you need to create what is called an external application. So the way we do this is very, very simple. You go into the Automation Cloud. In the Admin section, you go into External Applications, and you can see here that I have listed absolutely zero <laughs> external applications right now. So we'll add one. If you don't have admin rights in your Automation Cloud, you might need to ask your administrator to, to do this for you. But what they'll need to do is add an application up here. Give it a name. We will just call this one Yepes uh, Translator Application. We'll make it a confidential application, and then we'll need to add some scopes. In our case, just one scope. And what a scope is, is basically where you set or select what is the set of functionality that you want to expose to this external application, provided that it provides the right ID and secret. So we click Add Scopes, and then we select up here in the resources, we select the AI Center API access, which is right now in preview. Then we go to Application Scopes, and we just select all up here. That means that we get access to all of the functions or all of the APIs that AI Center exposes right now. We'll click Save. And then we will, down here at the bottom, need to click Add. And then what happens is we're shown this little dialog box. This has the app ID and the app secret in it. We want to copy both of these in the first go. We'll go into Notepad. And I'll actually just paste them both in. So now we have the app ID and the app secret. So now we have all values for the eight arguments that we need in order to make the API call. Now let's try and deploy the uh, automation and run it with these values. So I jump back into Studio. I publish it. And when it is published, I want to make sure that it is published to my uh, tenant processes feed. Click Next and Publish. And when we then jump into Orchestrator, that was successful, by the way. We'll just close this, jump into Orchestrator. If we go to the tenant level, and into uh, Packages, we should see this ML skill toggler package being deployed 17 seconds ago. Now we can start creating a process uh, using this package. So we'll go into my shared folder. We don't have any uh, processes or anything in here. So we will go into Automations. We'll add a process. And I will select the ML skill toggler package, which is the only one that is deployed to this, uh, this tenant. And right now we can see that uh, the entry point should be main SAML. This is the only SAML file we had, the only entry point. So that's good. And then we have all of the uh, the arguments here. We could fill these in right here, but that would mean that we could only run this process with this set of arguments. And then if we wanted to create another process to stop it, then we would have to add all of the arguments again. And you can you can sort of balance how many of them do you want to be permanent usually probably the organization name, the tenant name, uh, stuff like that. Uh, app secret, app ID maybe also. But today we're just going to run everything from the assistant and we'll fill in the information there and we can kind of play around with it. So let's just click uh, next. Next, and we will just give it uh, the name start. No, we'll, we'll call it toggle translator 
skill. And click create. What that does is if we open our UiPath Assistant, we should see it pop up. There we go. We get the toggle translator skill. What happens if I run this now? It fails because we didn't provide any of the values for all of these arguments, right? So we'll dismiss it. And now we can see all of these argument text boxes that we need to fill with information in order to actually run the automation and get a result. Before we do that, I'm going to jump into AI Center so we can see the skill as we run the automation. Go into the dummy project, go into the list of ML skills. We have the translator skill here that is currently available. That means this is now consuming AI units. And just to show you what that means, if we go into our admin section real quick and go into licenses, go into robots and services, we can see here, if we scroll down, this uh, graph right here showing how many AI units are being consumed um, in our instance of AI Center. And that's, you know, uh, yesterday was 1,000 units. That's a lot of money. That's like a, a roughly $100, $150 or something like that. It's quite a bit of money. Um, so we want to disable these skills when we don't need them. That's what we're doing now. So let's jump back into AI Center and into the dummy project, into the list of ML skills. And I'm just going to resize this just a little bit so we can actually see what's going on. Like that. And then we'll start uh, pasting all of the, the values from Notepad into our assistant here. So the organization name is October Demo. The tenant name is default tenant. The skill name is translator skill. And this value is actually only used to get the skill ID, which we cannot see um, otherwise. And as the skill right now is actually available, we want to stop the skill. So we'll type in stop as the skill action. The account ID, we will type in here, or paste in here. The tenant ID, we will paste into the tenant ID field. The app ID, we will type into the app ID field. And of course, the app secret, we will paste right in here. We'll save it and we'll go back to automations. And now we have the same skill or the same automation that we had a minute ago. Last time we ran it, well, three minutes ago, it failed because we hadn't filled out all of these arguments. If we run it now, I'll cross my fingers and hopefully we should see that when we then refresh uh, the list of skills over here, it should be stopped. So let's try and run it. We can see that this uh, job processed, it completed. And if we refresh over here, we can see that the skill has now stopped. If we go in here again and change the action to start, save it, go back and run it one more time. And now refresh when it's done in just a second. There we go. And now refresh uh, the list of skills. We can see that it is now deploying and it takes a few minutes to deploy a skill so we can't see it actually being deployed or having been deployed, it is in the state of deploying right now, but it's working. Now, what you can do, of course, doing this in assistant doesn't make a lot of sense. It was just an easy way to show it to you. What would make more sense if you scheduled this inside of Orchestrator? So um, if we jump into Orchestrator real quick, and inside our automations uh, tab here in our shared folder, what we could do was we could set up a new trigger. And then when we set up the trigger, don't forget uh, to give it a name. We could say start uh, translator skill, select the process that is the toggle translator skill. And then don't forget to set all of the arguments and then set the arguments that would be required in order to, in this case, start the translator skill. And then you could schedule this to run every day at a certain time, then create another trigger that would do the exact same thing, except with the action set to stop, that would then stop the skill. So if you only need the skill, let's say at eight o'clock every Friday for half an hour, then you can start it at 7.30 in the morning, it will be deployed by eight o'clock. And then by nine o'clock, when you know that the skill is no longer being used, you have another trigger that stops the skill. And then instead of consuming AI units throughout the whole week, you only consume for maybe an hour or two hours on Fridays when you actually need the skills. And this is how you can save a ton of money inside of AI Center. So as I promised in the beginning of the video, you can download this. There's a link to it in the description below. I think I'll put it on my Google Drive or something. There's a link down below. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I 
I, it really does help my channel if you give it a thumbs up. And maybe uh, if you have questions, put them in the comments. And also subscribe to my channel. There's a watermark, I think, in that corner maybe. Uh, a little red watermark. If you click that, you can subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell because then you won't miss any of my videos. I'm very happy if you watched <laughs> so far. Um, if you have any uh, questions, let me know in the comments. If you have uh, requests for videos, let me know. I might be able to fulfill them. Otherwise, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.